Mr. Leon Pereira. Madam Deputy Speaker, the member has filed a question on the proportion of rejected applications due to the job search and training requirement for the COVID-19 Support Grant CSG and COVID-19 Recovery Grant CRG for a subsequent sitting. I will address both questions in this reply. May I, Madam Speaker? Yes. Thank you. Both CSG and CRG assist lower to middle income resident employees who, as a result of the economic impact of COVID-19, are, one, involuntarily unemployed due to retrenchment or contract termination, two, based on involuntary no-pay leave for at least three consecutive months, or three, experiencing significant salary loss for at least three consecutive months. CRG also supports self-employed persons who experience significant loss in net trade income for at least three consecutive months. Applications for the CSG close on 31st December 2020, while CRG is open for applications until 31st December 2021. For both CSG and CRG, applicants experiencing job loss are required to provide supporting documents for their job search or training efforts. They can include attending job interviews or applying for training opportunities via government-linked touch points such like the My Careers Future and My Skills Future portals. Employees who are employed but are experiencing income loss or on voluntary no pay leave are exempted from this criterion because they are still working or may be recalled to work and hence will face more difficulty committing to job search or training. SAP applicants who wish to remain in their sector, current sector or trade can provide supporting evidence of their attempts to contact new clients or search for new business opportunities in lieu of job search and training. We have also implemented the COVID-19 Recovery Grant Temporary, or CRGT, which facilitates quicker assistance to those who are economically affected during this period of heightened alert. As it may be challenging for applicants to find jobs or undertake training under the tightened safe management measures, CRGT does not have job search and training conditions. Applicants failing to meet the job search or training criterion accounted for less than 1%, less than 1% of unsuccessful CSG applicants, applications and around 3% of unsuccessful CRG applications as of 27th June 2021. The member also asked about the CRG criterion for SAPs to fulfill their MediSafe contribution obligations. All working individuals should regularly contribute to their CPF for their retirement and future health care needs. As SAPs do not receive MediSafe contributions from employers, they are required to contribute to their own MediSafe accounts based on their past year's declared earnings to qualify for a second tranche, second tranche of CRG assistance, SAP applicants should either not have any outstanding MediSafe contributions or commit to making contributions via a gyro installment plan with CPF board. We have waived this requirement for those applying for their first tranche of CRG to allow eligible SAPs to receive timely assistance and give them more time to make arrangements for their MediSafe contributions. Now, individuals, individuals who do not meet the MediSafe contribution criterion make up less than 1%, 1% of the unsuccessful CRG applicant applications by SAPs. I would like to encourage those who do not meet the qualifying criteria for CRG but are facing extenuating circumstances and need help to approach our social service offices our SSOs will look into ways to support them. Our SSOs may also link them to other assistance schemes or community partners 
for further assistance if necessary. Mr. Leon Pereira. Uh, thank the Minister for his uh, reply and also the assurance that uh, the SCPs who could not meet MediSafe requirements constitute 1% uh, of those who were uh, rejected. Uh, just one uh, clarification. So the Minister mentioned that uh, the government will consider cases where SCPs uh, still have uh, MediSafe arrears if they will commit to an instalment plan or a gyro plan uh, going forward. Uh, bearing in mind that some of the SCPs at the lower end of uh, income uh, may still be very affected by the COVID uh, situation, uh, would such consideration include uh, allowing a time interval before a gyro plan kicks in? Uh, because some of the SCPs who work in certain industries like mice, for example, those that are tourism related, may still uh, face very low income for quite some time, and they may be able to commit to uh, installment payment of uh, MediSafe, uh, but perhaps not so quickly or immediately. Thank you. Minister. As I mentioned, the number that's actually uh, rejected on the basis of MediSafe uh, contributions is very, very low, less than 1%. This actually uh, testifies to the commitment by the 99% or more SCPs who actually are very committed to grow their MediSafe account. I think we should compliment them and reward them and not, on the other hand, uh, loosen too much on this MediSafe contribution criteria. Um, but having said that, uh, everyone who needs help, we will extend as much as we can, and if, even if they cannot qualify for CRG, or SSOs I know look for every other means to help them to ensure that they are not somehow uh, in dire needs because of not meeting specific criteria of the CRG or other assistance plan. Uh, Leader of the Opposition. I'd like to thank Minister for the reply. Just to uh, give us a better sense of the 1%. Uh, how, in absolute numbers, how many individuals are you referring to? Thank you. Minister. I thank you uh, to the leader of opposition for the question. Actually, I don't have the number in specific numbers, but to be specific about the percentage is 0.04%. 0.04% is very, very small.